So the other note here is that at the end of uh, Dynamite, as we'll talk about. Oh, you didn't want to bring up Top Dollar's video being uh, being released? Him and Who Kid together? The big TNA debut of I'm that? I'm afraid this is a bigger story. Oh, okay. Tony Schiavone interviewed Sting and Darby, uh, and he said, who are your, who is going to be your final opponent? And the Young Bucks music hit. They returned from a long hiatus. Came out with your mustache? Yeah, they had they had mustaches, and then they had a stare down with Sting and Darby as the show went off the air. So, in fact, the final match will be Sting and Darby versus the Young Bucks. That will be Sting's final match. Hmm. And uh, for those wondering, the reason that this is the final match in Sting's career is because it was Sting's choice, and Sting wanted his final match to be with the Young Bucks. Apparently they had a match. I don't even know when it was. It might have been like a multi-person. But uh, there was a match that involved Sting, Darby, and the Young Bucks. And uh, Sting apparently had the time of his life. And so that's the match. I know there was a lot on Twitter yesterday. Ah, it should have been! Ma! Ah! Well, if you have a problem, take it up with Sting. Because he got to pick. And that's what he chose. Yeah. Well, nothing wrong with that. I mean, there you look at the amount of work the Bucks do during a match, and look at the amount of work Sting has put in since he's been back. So I don't want to see him in there with anybody more violent than the Bucks. That's for sure, because God knows what Sting will do in his last match. You know, it was a surprise. I figured maybe FTR would be a good fit there, and thought maybe a singles match. But if they're going to go with a tag match, I don't think you can really complain about this too much. I'm praying Darby makes it. Back with the Dynamite Report, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. So I thought this uh, homecoming show was a pretty darn great show, in fact. And what was amazing is they're in Daly's Place. Here's another one of those weird ones. Wasn't Daly's Place D-A-L-Y? Like, it's... uh, No, it's always been dailies. Like Man, the, it's the Mandela effect. This changed during the pandemic, I think. It's not the Mandela effect. When we when we switched to another timeline, you just forgot the vowel there. But they uh, they drew twenty eight sixty one, which is Near not a daily. huge crowd. But man, what a great crowd it was! Yes, we had Hangman versus Claudio in the opener, and they had an excellent match. And Hangman did a lot of his old school spots, run down the ramp, Larry the guy into the ring. Hit a DDT, moonsault off the stage to the floor. Tombstone in the ring for a near fall. He gets hit with the uppercut. They go up top. Claudio tries a powerbomb. Hangman turns into Frankensteiner. Two buckshots, gets the pin. Excellent opening match here to kick off the show. We had a great Brody Lee video package. And then, in the first of two Brody Lee tribute matches, Preston Vance, Orange Cassidy, Dustin Rhodes, and Adam Copeland... Versus Gates of Agony, Brian Cage, Lance Archer in an eight person. And later in the show, they had one with the women, which was Sky Blue, Julia Hart, Soraya, Ruby Soho against Anna J, Thunder Rosa, Willow Nightingale, and Chris Statlander. Both of them were essentially put together in the exact same way. You get the heat on someone, someone gets a hot tag, big spots at the end, everybody hits a finish, and then you go home. And uh, they put over that Brody Lee's two hand-picked protégés were Preston Vance and Anna Jay. And so they were the two that got the win in these two matches here. And we had a spot where Jake Roberts beat up Jose, the assistant, and everyone went nuts for that. Jose was like a heel, even though Preston was a babyface. It's kind of how it worked. Although he was screwing over the... I guess he was a, I guess he was a babyface. But Jake beating him up was a babyface move to these fans. So anyway, finally, Orange hits the choke slam on Khan that she'd been trying all night. And then Cage and Archer started brawling. Edge ended up spearing Cage. Dustin hit the big dive. Preston hit the discus lariat. Got the pin. Very, very fun match. I enjoyed this. Bullet Club gold promo. Bowens tried to convince him to team up as the Bang Bang Scissor Gang. And uh, Austin is interested in this. Colton is not. And the uh, Bullet Club said we'd think about it. Had a Joe promo. 
Where he comes down to the ring. Thank you, Joe Chant. Says, anybody wants a piece of the champion, get your win-loss record up. Go to the championship committee. I'll be waiting. Swerve's music hits. He said, first time at Daly's. I want that title. I'm going to take it. So then out comes Hangman. He wants a shot at the title. Swerve tells him, dude, I beat you twice. So he ends up getting pulled out by Nana. They leave. Hangman says, Joe, I have not forgotten what you did to me, and I'm going to take your title. So he leaves, and then out comes Hook. And he storms down to the ring, gets in Joe's face, and he says, one week. So next week on Dynamite, it is, in fact, Samoa Joe versus Hook for the AEW title. What about the Hook symbol? Are you for it? I didn't even notice it. Oh, come on. They make an H? You didn't notice it? No, come on. Samoa Joe looked up. There was the big hook up there, like the Batman symbol on the wall. Oh, really? Hook came out. Yes. I did not see the hook symbol. Yes, I swear to God. I got to go back. <laughs> I got to go back and watch that. Tony Storm interview. She'll be, uh, she wants a meeting with Donna Palazzo. <laughs> They missed the chance, although they still have a chance to do it. Mariah May needs to be in there beating somebody down, and Tony Storm needs to be cheering her on. And then from behind, out runs Deanna Perrazzo, and then Tony Storm leaves the ring, and she beats up Mariah May. Deanna does. And then it could be Tony Storm sitting there with Luther going, It's Enrico Palazzo. <laughs> then we had Ricky Starks and Sammy Guevara. Yeah, the match wasn't, I mean, you hear Ricky and Sammy, you think it's going to be way better than this was. And Sammy hit a super kick, just kind of cradled him off the ropes, and it was the pin. I was like, what? <laughs> that was weird. Something was missing there. Like, it would, like he was going to hit the super kick and then roll into a pin or something. Like, I don't there know. Was, there was something like a quarter second off the entire match with those dudes. So then uh, afterwards, Sammy offered a handshake. They shook, but then Big Bill jumps him. They're stomping him down. New Jackico, I think he called him, yes. makes the save. They play Judas over and over. They have this wild brawl. Sets up the tag match coming up on Saturday. I mean, they did it right. I got to be honest. It went longer than I thought it would, but the idea of playing the music the entire time and then breaking into a brawl going Bro, different ways into the crowd was the right thing to do. That needs to be his next transformation, his next character. He needs to be a guy that they just played Judas for his entire Short, wild, New Jack brawl. He can have gimmicks and... But Brian, no, no, he can't. You know why? Because he's so desperately afraid of having that be a heel song. Even when he was a heel, he came out there and he sung it, and everybody's going to sing A along, heel song? Like, it sh Look, he should flip... Have different music. People love that song. They love singing along to it. Let it go. To me, you got to let that go. And if you're going to be a heel, have some one. He's a baby face. Doesn't he? To who? <laughs> he's literally a baby face. When he was a heel, he used the same music, did he not? Well, he did, but he's a baby face now. To some. And New Jack's music never turned heel on me, ever. No, but. I wish Chris, someone would buy the rights. Yeah, but you're making it. You want him to do this and like beat it into the ground. I thought and, and you want him to just. Ground. You think that's going to be a baby face thing? Yeah, I don't know. No one ever turned know. on New Jack or his music. <laughs> they it, were scared got, to. Got bigger every time. <laughs> we had the sky blue match, which I noted. Anna J won with the Queen Slayer. Roderick Strong beat Brian Keith, and then Cole did a promo afterwards. Basically the same thing. Roderick Strong's going after the international title. Taven and Ben are the ROH Tag Team Champions. And Wardlow will win the AEW title. So really yeah, nothing honest, new that he didn't talk about last yeah. week. The Young Bucks mustaches look better than Roderick Strong's mustache. <laughs> they do. They're all mustaches, dude. Renee and Deanna Parazzo had an interview segment. Deanna said, I'm going to make my collision debut on Saturday. Red Velvet showed up and said, let's stir it up. So they're going to stir it up. Is that your mixer? I guess. Stir Good. it up, huh? Wasn't that a song? Then Sting and Darby against Hobbs and Takeshita in a Texas Tornado match. They should play that song through the entire match. They could be. They could have a wild brawl while Stir It Up plays over and over again. Deanna Parazzo and Red Velvet. And then, yeah, Sting and Darby against Hobbs and Takeshita. 
God bless Darby. He's going to kill himself. Uh-huh. He took that chaos theory and landed right on his head. And that wasn't even the worst of it. The worst of it was when he got flung across the ring and did that spin. And then he oh, snapped oh, his oh neck God. on the bottom rope. And uh, he's just a mess. And in slow motion, you could see him knowing he was going to snap his neck on that rope in one of the rotations and try to get his hand up. Didn't quite work itself out. But maybe you should also be concerned with Sting making it to his last match if he keeps being in matches like this. I know he's been the unbreakable older man, but my God, that two-table fall, the Scorpion death drop that ended up being the pin over Hobbs. I mean, yeah, they hit one of the tables, but... That was, a, he, uh, that was a rough landing for both. We had Darby doing a dive to the outside, and then he fell off the cheap seats into a coffin drop on Takeshita. Sting gave Hobbs a death drop off the stage through two tables. If I found out today, and I don't know if this is the case, but like this is their last match before Sting's retirement, I would be happy because yeah, okay keep these that. two guys safe up until that match. Because like you know Sting's going to do something insane in that last match yes and and while you're at it put brian danielson back in that bubble until he's time for his last match too because he's still gonna worry me until it's over no he's got another one coming up with old chicken chest hmm. here in a uh who by the way is no longer a chicken chest which i take credit for oh come he's, on he dude he's bigger than tom he's bigger than filthy tom now well let's not no he is but... tom was in the ring with him he goes he's bigger than me but can he throw those kettlebells the same way? I don't think no, so. No, absolutely not. No. Absolutely not. No. Then we had uh, Tony getting in the ring, and that's when the Young Bucks mustaches came out. And hat. Hey, listen, if I'm going to have my last match, which I already had, by the way, but if I'm going to have another one, it would be that's... against heel Young Bucks. You couldn't <laughs> have a better last match, except then I'd have to be a baby face. I was going to say, wait, who's the... Yeah, yeah who's... that wouldn't work out. Well, if you're teaming with Filthy... I want to go out hated. Done. And on your back, looking at the lights? I won my last match over the tag team champions. By myself, I might add. Would you win them over the Bucks? And then Tom had to come back and mess it all up. And oh, Black see? Label Pro had to screw me by saying it was oh, a non-title come on. match. Listen, listen, Mikey. I want those belts just handed to me. You realize that Jinder Mahal... By the way, Jinder folks, Mahal, he's not talking about me. Definitely. Jinder Mahal hasn't won a match on WWE television in 18 months. Mm-hmm. And he's getting a championship match this coming Monday. You're telling me I couldn't get a title match against the Bang Bros? I'm going to make my own set of belts. I deserve them. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. You have a commute. Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.